What's going on, everybody? Getting ready to get the show started. Come talk about a couple things. I'm trying to focus on the camera. Bow right there. I'm trying to focus on the camera. I'm bad at that. Still getting set up though. That's why I got this long song playing. I got the long version. Back when they used to give you all the instrumentals and stuff like that, so the DJ had time to to bring in other songs and stuff. Like and share. Share this conversation with a couple of people. We're gonna be talking about a couple of things today. Trying to get this other laptop ready. Up. We're going to get into it in here, here in a second. A couple things I wanted to talk about, right? I couldn't... See, my problem is I don't have one subject that I think about. I have a couple different subjects that I think about. So I may talk about politics. I may talk about religion. No telling. I think they're all important, though. I can get this other uh, laptop up. thing started. Stupid. You're about to get started, John. Let me give you the call in number. I'm going to wait till we start talking about um, abortion rights in order to get the call in number because I know that's probably what you all want to yell at me about. Get it started. Cheer, cheer. I gave y'all the long version today. You know, I'm just feeling generous. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mark B. The Breaks on JQLM Radio, you have arrived. We're going to chop it up today, man. Um, I had to give you all the long version so I could 
get some stuff uh, situated. I wanted to do it right. I got a couple things I want to talk about today, right? So we just had the midterm elections um, and we had, we, we voted people in and everything like that. I wanted to talk about though, the two things that I say are an issue for me are one, any uh, politician that wants my vote, let me get this camera right so it won't seem like I'm trying to duck out the camera. Anybody that wants my vote has to have a black agenda. Anybody that wants my vote, let me say that again, has to have a black agenda. That black agenda meaning um, an issue, uh, taking care of mass incarceration, taking care of mandatory minimums, um, black the, the disparity in the in the pay gap between African Americans and everybody else. I'm talking about the uh, school to prison pipeline. I'm talking about uh, the the lack of educational resources and finances in the black community. I'm talking about uh, the lack of of business uh, grants and opportunities given to black African Americans. I'm talking about all that, all of that, all of those things. I want somebody with a black agenda to to uh, to come and 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 get my vote. You're gonna work for my vote, right? Um, I'm. People have an issue with there being like 20 some odd Democratic candidates. I don't have an issue with it. Um, you know, weed in a tear. You know, anybody that's Bible scholars out there, you know, you 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 let it fall and you see what falls by the wayside. I look at it like the parable of the sower. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have some people who pop up like, uh, like uh, fine flowers. They're going to rise real fast. And then you're going to do a little bit of checking into their background and find out, hey, 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 this person ain't really legit, right? So, um, like, for instance, Uncle Joe, we call him, right? Um, uh, uh, the former vice president. Uh, we we talk about, for some reason, his, his last name is drawn a blank for me. Um, I, I'll probably think of it after I get into the conversation a little bit. Uh, but Uncle Joe, right? So we we talk about um, Biden. There we go. Told you. So Joe Biden, and we talk about oh yeah, Joe Biden. He's going to run, and that's going to be like a carryover from the Obama uh, administration, right? No, not really. No, um, because if we look back at Joe Biden's history, Joe Biden is the author of the crime bill that sent so many African Americans to the penitentiary that we've had to overturn laws now just to get people out. He's the reason why there's people in jail right now for selling the same substance that white people are making a killing in in Colorado and California, right? The weed industry. He's the reason. He not not just him, but he is a major reason and we and not only that he refuses to apologize for it. He still he stands behind it, right? So that's like somebody who who came up with a law uh, in in your household to where you would be um, beat every time you stepped through the front door, but everybody else can step through the front door. You got to come in through the side, and then because of that, you have post traumatic uh, stress disorder and. You don't like front doors of houses no more, or nothing like that, and you're you you're broken hearted every time you see uh, uh, somebody mention the word front door or something like that. And and he knows that you're going through all that trauma. In fact, while he was making the law, he knew that it was unfair. He said he didn't care. He didn't care why they were super predators. He didn't super predators is Hillary Clinton's term. I don't want to mismatch. He didn't care why they were disenfranchised. He did not care why um, there was so, so much uh, disparity in, in the communities that forced them into a life of crime or, or made a life of crime seem more, uh, mm. more financially uh, uh, suitable or not. He didn't care. Only thing I care is about my mother not getting knocked over the head or my daughter being safe. That's the only thing. Joe. Uncle Joe, crazy Uncle Joe, cared about him. 
And now he's got to answer for it. He's got to answer. Did they want to hit him? Now, he was on The View, and they were talking to him then. But the only thing that they grilled him about was um, was uh, Anita Hill and how he handled the Anita Hill uh, hearing and how he was uh, one of the people who made it seem as if it was her fault that she should have, um, she came forward the way that she did that somehow it was her fault for um, for Clarence Thomas harassing her sexually and having a, I think at the time I remember he had some pubic hairs on, or, or accused, or, or there was a hair on her coat can and asked her if that was a pubic hair and stuff like that. Yeah, it may seem like that was her fault, that, that she was just whining or complaining, right? So he's got to deal with that stuff. We have to ask questions of these candidates and we have to stop just bringing politicians in and giving them our vote because we're used to them being in office. People are freaked out about um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez because she is not going along with politics as usual. She's asking questions. She's not afraid to uh, offend people or establishment Democrats. She's, uh, she's speaking truth to power and she's doing what the people in elected her to do. She didn't come from money. So she's not trying to preserve the institution of money. That's freaking a whole bunch of white people in, in, uh, in office out. And some old black cats that's been there for, for years and have, and, and you, and use the fact that they marched with King as a platform for ineptitude when they got in office. We need to hold these people accountable. You know what I'm saying? We need to ask them questions. And if their answers don't add up, or if it seems like they hold the same ideals that they had back then when they created that policy that wasn't good for us, then we move on to the other 22 candidates. I'm fine with that. You know, uh, it, it's like Apocalypse in, in, uh, in the uh, Marvel Universe. Survival of the fittest. That's what I believe. Survival of the fittest, right? Um, so I'm all for checking out these politicians and checking out their background, uh, making sure that they... Uh, they add up to snuff. So the a black agenda is what I'm looking for. I need to see what you got going. What 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 are you going to do that's going to benefit my community? How are you going to help little boys that are are struggling because maybe their father's locked up off of some BS weed charges or something like that? Um, how are you going to help them not to uh, be a plague on society? How are you going to get their fathers out because there's white dudes making millions of dollars for doing what their father was doing on the, on the corner. You know what I'm saying? Tell me how you're going to do that and how you're going to wipe that slate clean so when he's applying for a job so he can take care of his family that you're that they're not going to disqualify him because he's got that felony on his, on his background for doing the same thing that some white dude or some white chick is making millions of dollars for in Colorado. And I say white because majority of the people making a lot of money in, in the um, in the legalized marijuana industry are Caucasian Americans. So I need a black agenda from politicians that are coming out. I need you to tell me, I, I used to, and here's the thing, I used to feel a certain way about asking for a black agenda. I had to change that because I, it almost felt like I was asking too much. But you know what? If I think that's a, a psychosis that black people have where we're like, we're used to letting, like being in line, right? And then letting some everybody come and cut in front of us in line. Like we in line to get our rights. And then the LGBTQ community comes and they like, hey, I need my rights too. Oh, well, you come on, come on, you can get in front of, in front of me. Go ahead. And, you, and then you'll have uh, women's liberation movement. Now, hey, we need our rights. Okay, you just, you come, you come on. And I'll, you know, yeah, give her her rights, give them their rights, right? And then we'll we'll talk about immigration. And up, well, oh, you come on, come on, you all get in front of us, right? And you go ahead and you get your rights, and we'll wait. Black people have been asked to wait for a very long time. We every time we talk about what we want as an agenda, we're labeled as being selfish. Notice that every time we speak on. What we need is in a community in order for us to thrive, in order for us to do well. Because as far as as far as this country is concerned, there's only one group that's that's been here, maybe two groups that's been here longer than us. 
one of them enslaved us and the other one they tried to enslave because they were here first but they weren't going so we've been here long enough to deserve a piece of the united states and to feel as if this is our country too that all the laws and and all the regulations and all the constitution applies to us as well but we don't get it so we deserve this. We need to make sure that we have a black agenda for anybody who's trying to get your vote. It's not good enough for them to just have a couple black people that they cool with. We need to have somebody with a specific black agenda. When we ask them about uh, reparations, quit acting like y'all asking them for money. Quit acting like y'all asking them to borrow a dollar. You're not. This is a contract. The government decided that they should give reparations. They gave them to Japanese Americans. And, and what they went through was horrible. But what they went through can't compare to what we went through. So why, why are we, black people have it bad when we co-opt our suffering or our struggle um, with other people's suffering and struggle. We let, that's why I use the analogy of letting people cut in front of us in line. We let them get in front of us and be like, hey, you go ahead and you do you. Um, yeah, yeah, they need rights too because we're for rights. Black people in general, as a society, we're for the rights of everyone. We believe that everybody should have rights. Everybody, right? But our rights, have we're always, we're the only community where when we demand our rights or when we speak about, hey, I want this as an agenda, people are saying, well, what about those people? What about them? Or else, um, well, I just don't know if America's ready for blah, 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 blah. We're the only ones. Nobody, when it, came to, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to gay marriage, right? You have a lot of people who are for gay marriage. I'm for gay marriage also. I'm, I am a Christian man. I, mm -hmm. as, a, uh, as a spiritual practice or as a lifestyle choice, I do not believe that homosexuality is in line with biblical teachings. But as a, an, an American citizen, I believe that you have the right as a grown taxpaying individual to get with any other grown taxpaying individual and do whatever you want to do. I believe in that. Right? So does that go against my, my religious beliefs? Kind of. Kind of, but not really. Because even Jesus said, render unto Caesar was Caesar's. That means that everything is not ran according to biblical teachings. There's some things that belong to this world that need to be given to this world, right? Um, what's going on, Jeanette? What's going on, Nika? Um, yeah, we're always made to feel guilty. When we stand up for our rights, we're considered to be um, too aggressive. When I say stop mistreating me or stop abusing me, I'm considered to, to be super aggressive. When you disrespected me and I check you on your disrespect, then all of a sudden, I, I'm at fault. I should be feared, right? But that, it's only that way because we've allowed for so long our culture to be, um, to be toyed with and to be played with and to be worn like a coat and then taken off and cast aside um, whenever uh, the, the opportunity arises to where we, we don't demand that people take us seriously and take our needs seriously. We don't demand it. Other people do. Jewish community does. The Japanese community does. You know, even the even the the Muslim community. They they're not taking shorts. They're not saying um, you can treat us right if you if you want to. No, they're demanding to be treated treated fairly as well. Black people have to do the same thing. We we need people who have a black agenda, and that's who we're gonna who we're gonna put in office. Also. I'm looking at the fact that we got to pay attention to what we see in, right? We look at the bar that was set as far as the people who were, who disagreed with President Obama and what they disagreed with and what they had an issue with, right? Even people in President Obama's own party disagreed with certain policy decisions that he made, right? Um, Republicans refused to do that. And they have a president who they have lowered the bar of what, um, what the the office of presidents of the the office of the president is so low that anybody can fit anybody can be the president like anybody can and it used to not be that way right so you have a president who um who said that 
and um, you know, if your kids are around, I apologize, but I got to speak the truth. A president that, that said candidly in a bus, hey, you know, I'm a celebrity. I love being a celebrity because I can just go up to a beautiful woman and kiss her whenever I want to. Grab her by the pussy, do whatever I need to do. And, you know, they'll just let you because I'm a celebrity. That's your president that said that before he was in office, not after this. These weren't tapes that were revealed after he got in the office. And he's got law. He's got uh, lawsuits on him for possible child molestation uh, charges. He's the Mueller report did not exonerate him. The Mueller report said that it's up to Congress to take it further, that he he committed acts that were definitely impeachable, but the Congress has to move forward with that. But we've set the bar so low, we have Democrats in office like Nancy Pelosi who, who, who want to go along with the status quo. They want to keep things the way that it was. That's why they don't like an Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez because she's like, no, we need to impeach this person and we need to cleanse the offices of, of the presidency. And Nancy Pelosi is like, well, if we do that, then they will do this. And this. We, we need weakness to be weeded out of the Democratic Party. You know what I'm saying? We really do. We, we need new ideas. We need people who are like 70 years old and stuff like that to go ahead and, and move on with their life because their idea of what America is is not the current idea of America. It's not what Americans want, right? So you got um, you got people like 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 you're subpoenaed by the the um, by the Congress, and the president who you don't work for tells you not to go, and you you just uh, okay, I won't go. Be now the president is more is more powerful than the other equal branch of government. That's basically what we're saying, and you're cool with it if you voted for him. You're saying. You're basically saying that we should have this person be king. Just just crown him king where he can do whatever he wants to and we can't do anything because I voted for him. I want everything he does to be given a pass. So you don't really care about the country. You care about his celebrity. And if that's the case, then name him celebrity in chief. Not president, right? Political rant. Um, partially over because... That's that's just that that thing I want to talk about. All right, um, I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a break. Now we're gonna talk about abortion rights on this show. We're just gonna just gonna touch on it. We're not gonna go super super in depth. I'm gonna give you my opinion, and I'm gonna what I'm gonna also do is I'm I want to have a panel of people come in and we can discuss it. It might be an extended show. We might go two hours or something like that an extended show where we talk about this from a couple different avenues. I don't have all the answers. All I have is my opinion, right? Um, I'm not a woman. I do not have reproductive organs that allow me to house a child on the inside of me. Um, I do believe that I'm part of the process, though. And being part of the process, I should have some kind of say. And I'm going to have that say when I come back from, uh, from this commercial break. I'm going to have some, some, might have a little bit of old school music playing. If you don't have the JQLM radio app, you probably need to download that thing. We got a lot of thing pop, things popping off on JQLM radio. You're going to really miss out if you don't have it. And, and we got commercials and stuff. If you want to advertise on JQLM radio, you can hit me up. You can hit Lady J up. We're, we're under the Ego Entertainment um, uh, umbrella. You can advertise here if you got things that you're items that you're wanting to sell. We promote black businesses. We we promote white businesses also if they want to do business with black people. Don't come on here thinking that you're gonna you're gonna promote and you're gonna get all this good black goodness over here, but you don't want to patronize black people. Now nah, we don't do that here. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is an ally or family, either or, right? So if you want to advertise, if you want to be a sponsor of the breaks on JQ Allen radio, hit me up personally. You can hit me up on my inbox and Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. I'm all over that thing. All right. Be back in a few minutes. JQ Allen radio. Mark B. You know what, y'all? I might not even... I had a, a second segment that I was going to do. 
I might wait and push that to the end. I don't want to, uh, not that that's not important, it's important to me also, but I really want to get into this discussion about abortion rights, right? Again, because I don't have other people in, in here with me, if you want to call in, call in numbers 317-654-9790, again, 317-654-9790. All right. If you want to call in, uh, you can definitely call in and we can chop it up. Um, I really think that we should have this discussion. I think that uh, I've seen some stuff that doesn't make sense to me um, as far as women are concerned. Concerning this, I keep I keep wanting to look here because this is where the pictures are. No, I'm looking right here. I'm focused right there. All right. Um, I, I, I've. I think I've seen some stuff that has kind of distressed me as far as the attitude that I've seen some women have concerning um, the this abortion topic and this abortion conversation. I think that it's kind of productive in certain ways, right? So I'm gonna make some people upset. Some people gonna vibe with me though. Um, one thing that I, I don't mind people disagreeing with me. Please trust that I don't mind that. I will not cut you off. I will not hang up the phone um, if you call and you um, disagree. No, I will not. I'm fine with disagreeing. I just ask that you be respectful. That's all. I'm going to be respectful. I'm not going to call you out your name or nothing like that. I don't believe in doing that stuff. I think that's stupid. But I do want to have a comprehensive conversation. So this is just going to be a quick wet your whistle, see where I'm coming from. Maybe somebody will hear this and either want to want to further my knowledge on it, or maybe somebody will hear it and be like, no, I need to go and I need to be on that panel so I can tell that brother that he don't know what he's talking about, right? But we definitely going to talk about it. If I don't get to um, my third topic, which I'm or my second topic, which I'm shelving to be the last topic, I was going to talk about some more NFL hypocrisy. That was my... That was my second thing that I was going to talk about. Chad Kelly, looking him up. Right? I think we've had enough commercials. After this, we're going to, we're going to come back in. Let me see what kind of song I'm going to, I'm going to give y'all so get y'all there. If you have not downloaded the JK, JQLM radio app, get it. It don't cost nothing. Get it. We promote black businesses. We are all about the the empowerment and the progression of black people we have a lot of voices on our channel we got the gospel get down every morning from seven to nine we got uh shows just about every day we got music playing constantly if you got music that you want uh to play on the on the network then you can hit us up in the email ego entertainment dot uh dot net on um on the uh, uh on the, you can hit the Facebook page. You can hit the Breaks um, radio page if you haven't downloaded the JQLM, rap, JQLM radio app and hit the Use App button. You can listen that way if you don't got your phone by you. You should. Everybody got a phone, right? Me, myself, and I is playing right now, but you would know that if you don't have a JQLM radio app. You need to download that app and you need to listen to me. Listen to your boy while I'm out here trying to talk about this, this thing out here, right? Coming back in. Just me, myself, and I. Just me, myself, and I. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where were you when you heard this song, right? Hey, 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 hey. Uh, uh. Oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mark B. The Breaks on JQLM Radio. Just talking a little politics. A little bit. Trying to make some people upset. Make some people think. That's what I do, right? So, um... Dang, I probably did not even record this show. That's, uh, dang, that sucks. It doesn't matter. Um, I'll do better next time. I'm trying to get myself together. But here's the thing. We're going to be talking about now, um, further in our conversation on, on politics, because we were talking about, um, we were talking about the, having a politician that has a black agenda. We need politicians that have a black agenda who are not going to force us to sacrifice our needs for our community 
um, in order to make somebody else feel good. They do it constantly, both Republican and Democrat, and they do it because they're afraid that if we ever achieve what we're trying to achieve, that somehow we're going to lessen them as a community. Them meaning uh, colonizers, colonizers meaning uh, Europeans, Europeans meaning white folk. Uh, white folk meaning old white folk, not the young ones, you know what I'm saying? Old white folks. Old white folks meaning old white folks with money, you know what I'm saying? That's really the institution that we're fighting against. We're not fighting against white people. Uh, we To be black or pro-black is not to be anti-white, contrary to popular belief. What we're talking about is our community, our culture. Allowing it not to just be an adornment, but to also be a part of the United States. Now, I want to push the conversation um, to something a little bit deeper than that. I want to push the conversation and talk about um, abortion rights. There we go. Push that in there. Talk about abortion rights. So, um, a lot of you all have heard Alabama and um, Mississippi um, I believe Missouri also have passed a um, a new law that, and the only reason why they passed it is because they wanted to go to the Supreme Court because they believe that they have um, a conservative enough uh, superior court, Supreme Court, that they can get this changed. And the thing is, here's here's the funny thing about it, if you can find it. The people who are pushing for this ban on abortions are the people who who have benefited from the ability to have abortions the most, right? Because the people who were dying behind the ban of, of, of abortions were poor people. Poor people would have to go to these back alleys and, and get abortions because either, you know, they're their family member, uncle, father, you know, family friend or whatever, or just a random dude would rape you and leave you impregnated. You don't want to carry the child of your rapist, nor should you have to. And then your your country is telling you, your state is telling you that, no, we demand that you carry the the evidence of your rape or molestation for eight to nine months after you do that you know we really ain't got nothing for you we're not going to give you any extra money we're not going to help you raise the child or nothing like that but we demand that you do this now i can't think of any other medical issue that that the state or that the it would be polite in in polite society for them to force someone to to gestate um, any other life organism. Imagine, imagine you have a tapeworm. Am I comparing a child to a tapeworm? No, shut up. But imagine you have a tapeworm and you're like, doctor, look, I got a tapeworm. I need you to take this thing up out of me. And the doctor's like, hey, hey, hey. That tapeworm has a life, it has a soul, has a heartbeat. Or maybe it doesn't have heartbeat. I don't know, but the tapeworms have heart. But it, it is a living organism. You have to carry it to full uh, uh, fruition or until it is of a mature age. And then, then I will help you to, to remove it. And after that, you have to take care of it also. It would be unheard of. Imagine that... Um, that somebody came into your house and they're like maybe 12, maybe 10. They come and they sit in your house and you're like, hey, uh, get out of my house. And they're like, no, I'm going to retire here. And you're like, no, get the hell up out of my house. And then you call the police and the police are like, hey, we can't do anything about it because, you know, that's your house and that's that person is not of an adult age yet to where um, they could be peacefully removed from your you know, abode. Imagine that once that person becomes of adult age that you have to take care of them 
even though you didn't want them there in the first place. What kind of mother can you expect somebody to be who's being forced to um, to form a life in their body that they did not want, did not ask for, that was violently put there, right? That's one aspect. Another aspect is somebody who um, who is on birth control. Um, the guy that they're with, he... Uh, maybe he says that he, you know, you all are in, in that position that, that like, I, you know, the, the position where, you know, where you can play fetch, you know, that position. I'm trying to watch my words, you know, you know, I know it's, I know it's late, but I don't know if y'all got people listening. Imagine you're in that position. You think that, you know, he's pulling out a condom and he pretends to pull it out and he pretends to put it on, but he doesn't. And you can't really see back there because you got a whole bunch of backyard back there, right? You're just hoping that he do the right thing. And he doesn't actually put one on. He goes ahead and then he shoots the club up, let loose, right? Um, now you are forced to, and, and say your birth control fails. You're forced to be the mother of, of a child that you did not ask for. Imagine, imagine, that you are financially struggling already. Um, you are doing the best that you can. You're working as hard as you can, but you just can't afford not one more bill. And then you're late. And then your doctor says that you are six weeks pregnant. Right? Now, six weeks, a month and a half, right? Um, the... The law that they're putting in place uh, in in Mississippi and Missouri and Alabama says that at the six week mark, you are no longer allowed to get an abortion. Now keep this in mind: unless you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that that uh, somebody shot the club up, that that they let loose, unless you know beyond a shadow of a doubt. And you take no precaution the morning after pill, nothing. You take no precaution at all. Unless you're trying to be pregnant, you're not going to know that you're pregnant. Most women aren't going to know within the six week time frame. Why? Because cycles are monthly. That's four weeks, right? You're late on your cycle, okay? Two weeks might be when, if, if a, a week you might let it slide before you check. Second week, you're like, okay, I have to get it looked at. I have to get checked, right? You may not be able to get into your doctor's office right away. So they set you up an appointment. That appointment is a week out. Maybe two. By the time you get there, yes, you're pregnant. You're uh, 10 weeks pregnant. Well, you've already passed the six-week due date. There's absolutely nothing you can do. Because there's, there's men who are deciding decisions for a woman's body. I don't agree with that. I do believe that men should have a say. I do believe that. I do believe that uh, the male population should have a say concerning abortion rights. And here's the reason why. Because currently... The decision to be a parent is totally and completely left up to a woman. Totally and completely. We're gonna we're gonna forget about um, forget about the the actions that lead to creating a child because both people are culpable in that. And I don't think that you can you can say rightfully that just because somebody has sex that they are ready to have a child. That's just not true. It's, it's, we don't put that burden on rich people. We shouldn't put that burden on poor people. We don't tell rich people to not have sex unless you're ready to have a child. So we shouldn't put that same burden on poor people because the way that the law is written now or the way that the law that, that they're trying to introduce is written, the people who are going to be affected are going to be poor people because rich people can always go somewhere else and get an abortion, get an abortion like they were before. A rich person can always charter a flight and go to some other country where you can get it all the way up to, you know, five months, six months and get an abortion and then come back and they'll say that they went on a family trip. That's how they used to do it back in the day. Right. But the only people who were able to afford that 
were rich people. Now, if you're putting this, this basically a, to a ban on abortion, if you're saying that six weeks is all you have in order to find out that you're pregnant and then actually decide whether you want to terminate the pregnancy or continue with the pregnancy, the only people that that affects is poor people. Rich people will not be bound by that constraint. They won't be. Ask Donald Trump. Ask how many, well, you can ask him, he's going to lie. Ask, uh, ask people who have actually stomached sleeping with Donald Trump and get gotten pregnant by him, right? How many abortions has he paid for? You know what I'm saying? What makes the law unfair is that there's no way to make it, uh, there's no way to make it fair for everyone, number one. You're forcing poor people to stay in a debt cycle. You're, you're giving special privileges to rich people who can afford to go someplace else and get an abortion done. Um, you're forcing poor people to find alternative means in order to not have the burden of child care, which can mean them being in some dark alley, like they said, with the coat hanger and dying because it was done in, in a way that is totally unsafe and unhealthy and not clinical. You're forcing that to happen. Now, I believe that men should have a say in the, the writing of abortion laws. And this is the reason why. Like I said, as it stands, once conception happens, men have no rights. Some women are like, oh, well, don't have sex with, with women. Okay, cool. Don't have sex with us. That doesn't make sense. That's what that says is that uh, the burden, again, falls on disadvantaged people. I say that that nobody, if they are, um, if they've made it known that they don't want to be a parent, should be forced to be a parent by anybody else. I don't think that the government should make a woman a parent when she hasn't asked to be. I don't think uh, the the state should make a woman carry a child to term and be responsible ultimately for uh, that child during the nine months at least. And the reason why is because of what I talked about in a previous show. Once that child is born, they could care less about that child. They're not going to take care of the child that you didn't ask to have. They're not going to give you extra money um, on top of the money that you are making to take care of yourself. If you make more than $14 an hour, you're not going to get uh, if, you, if you make more than $11 an hour, you're not going to get assistance to be able to take care of that child that you didn't ask for. So the government is basically saying that we're going to force you to have this child. We're going to force you to take care of it. Now, the difference is, I think it's in Alabama. You, even if the, the child is a result of rape, you're still going to be forced to have that child. You're still going to be forced to carry that child. So uh, imagine, imagine being a man and having, um, having a dude anally rape you. And then he puts a brand on your forehead of his penis and balls. And you have to carry that brand. You can't get it removed. You, you, you got to carry it around. Um, imagine that you have to carry it around for the rest of your life. You have to be, you have to maintain it also. You know, you got to make sure that it, it stays. Don't try and get any skin grafting or anything. No, penis and balls right in the forehead, right, right there. Balls, penis, right there. You got to, you got to keep that. No man would sign up for that. Yet we have laws that allow for um, Viagra to be, um, to be, covered under your insurance, but a medical, um, a medical procedure, abortion has to be paid for out of pocket. That doesn't make sense to me. And what that tells me is that uh, pay, you are living in a patriarchal society that values uh, men and their uh, reproductive rights way more than they value women and their reproductive rights. That being said, I tell women that if you want, like I've heard, like there was, there were statements, there were posts somebody made that said that, uh, and it was from uh, my friend, Namia. She said that, um, that men need to sit this conversation out. If we sit the conversation out, who are you going to be talking to? 
Men need to sit the conversation out. That, that seems counterproductive to me. If we're going to sit the conversation out, who's going to benefit from the conversation then? Who are you going to be talking to? You're not going to be talking to anybody. You're going to talk to other women? That doesn't, you, there's nobody, for, if, if we sit the conversation out, there is nobody for you to talk to. There's nobody for you con to convince. There's nobody for you to agree with or disagree with, right? So what, what makes more sense is for you to have allies that are like-minded that are males, not guys who, who go along to get along or who have no opinion at all. And they just like, well, you know, uh, fellas, we really need to shut up and let the women just do whatever they're going to don't trust that type of dude. I can't stand that type of dude. Just shut up. He should shut up. He definitely should shut up because it's patronizing to believe that your vanity is so frail, that your ego is so frail that you can't even have a, a conversation. You can't stomach a conversation with, with, uh, with anybody who may have a different take on you. I respect women enough to believe that we can have a difference of opinion and we can talk about what those differences are and maybe come to a resolution or an agreement that it's not um, that I have to agree with everything that you say or else I'm bashing you, that you that you can't differentiate the difference between somebody who has uh, questions about certain things or an opinion about certain things and somebody who needs to who's bashing you and who's trying to keep you subjective. I think more highly of women than that. I was raised by mostly women and I know the strength of women. So I know that I can go to my aunts or to my mom and disagree with something that they say and they're not going to fall apart. They're not going to believe that I'm a chauvinist because I disagree with something that they say. Because they're, they're passionate about what they believe in, but they're also intelligent. And I think that anybody who placates to... Um, to your position or, or your opinion and, and refuses to offer uh, uh, an, any kind of uh, counter argument that they may actually have, I think that they're dis disingenuous. I think that that person you can't really count as an ally, right? So when it comes to um, abortion rights, and I'm going I'm to go ahead and, and, and uh, ride this thing out and, and we'll just end early. So I'll just throw commercially in at the end, you know. It's my show. I can do whatever I want. Um, but I think that if we're going to have a, a legit conversation about abortion rights, that you have to you have to invite men who are a part of the process of having a child. You have to invite men into that conversation. Now, there's there's a kind of man that you don't need in that conversation. That kind of man believes that he knows better than you do what you need to do for you. You don't need that type of guy. You need a guy who's saying, okay, listen, if you have an abortion, I may want that child. In fact, let me confess something to you all. I put it in my book. The Man Up Blueprint, go cop that, it's on Amazon. I confessed this in my book that when I was a very young man, uh, early 20s, early 20s, yes, I, um, I was dating a young woman and we had sex and she got pregnant. She decided to have an abortion. I didn't want her to have one. I begged her not to. In fact, I begged her and pleaded with her. And I said, listen, um, I, I will raise the child by myself. I will never speak an ill word to you uh, or to the child about you. Just don't do this. And she, she was adamant. She said, no, I need to do this for myself. She had already had one child. She didn't want to have another. Um, and she went ahead and here's here's two things my biggest regret is that i was not there for her because we disagreed i was not there for her when she was actually going through that process because i didn't i didn't know what how to be there through something that i disagreed with i didn't know how to do that but i apologized to her about that um one of my one of the biggest regrets that I ever had in my life. Not that I agreed with what she was doing, but a man who I was I was trying to figure out how to be one at that time. A man will still um, be there through even the disagreement because he's part of that process. And I think that I could have done better. I, I teach to do better. I now know to do better now as an older man. Um, but. 
if she had decided not to um, have the uh, abortion, and let's just say that I decided I didn't want to be a father. What if I had told her beforehand, hey, look, I don't want to be a father. I'm wearing, you know, I'm wearing my protection and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden during the situation, it breaks. It happens. It happens a lot. The reason why we need to have men have a say in the conversation is not for the women who do everything right and who are completely blameless in the situation. It's for the ones who aren't. And it's not for the men who do everything right in the conversation. It's for the men who don't. Because that's what laws are written for. Laws are written for the people who need the laws. The people who need the laws are the people who, without the laws, will infringe on somebody else's uh, right to, to life or happiness. So we need to have conversations and say, hey, look, um, I get that it's your body. You're deciding whether to hold on or, or to keep this, um, this uh, life in your body for nine months or not. Um, I've made it known to you that I don't want to be, I think it's just as unfair to force a woman to be a parent as it is to force a man to be a parent. If, if they've made it known prior that they don't want to be one, I think it's just as unfair. I honestly feel that way. And I think that in making somebody do that, you're not, it ultimately is not the best thing for the child because the child only wants people that love them. The only thing a child wants is to be loved. And you're forcing people to have an emotion that they probably will never have for a child that they were created to, to uh, they are for a child that they were forced to create. And life just doesn't, it doesn't work that way. You know, it, it doesn't, it, it's not going to be a situation where, um, Feelings can just happen. Uh, feelings can just happen with somebody who who has decided they didn't want this child, but you're making them have it. But so their emotions they'll catch up. That's not how life works. All right. Um, stay tuned. Um, I will have an announcement as to when I have that uh, that panel discussion. I'm really going to have people. I want people who disagree with me, man. I don't want people who who like, you know, yeah, Mark, you know what? I feel what you're saying. No, nah, I want to have a real discussion about things. I, I promise. Look, I don't call people out their name. I don't do that stuff. I want a real conversation about this, though, because I feel like the conversation is bigger than just shut up, men. It's a woman's body. I think the conversation is bigger than um, than that baby is, is defenseless. Don't kill the baby because if a 11 year old gets pregnant and is raped and gets pregnant and she's forced because, you know, the, the pro-life people force her to have that child, that same girl at 11, at 12 can wait for the baby to come out, shoot the baby in the face and get less time than she would under these new opposed uh, supposed laws. All right. So something in the milk ain't white. We're going to talk about it though. Uh, stay tuned. JQLM radio got a lot of music and stuff playing for you after I get off of here, but I'm out of here. See you next Wednesday. Same bat time, same bat channel, the breaks, JQLM radio. It's your boy, Mark B Facebook. I'll probably talk to y'all for a little bit longer, a little bit, a little bit longer. All right. Peace and head grease. Those in radio land until we meet again. All right. Well, like I was saying, man, I I don't believe in um, enforcing people to forcing somebody to be a parent. I think that's the dumbest thing in the world. I think that in, in a, a many of our parents, I'm speaking of the older generation, a lot of us are here because somebody's mama thought that making your father a parent was going to make him a better husband, and they found out wrong. Some of us have made that same decision or that have that same thought that a uh, uh, guy will have the thought of getting her pregnant will keep her with me. You know what I'm saying? Or 
it'll make sure that I can always get in there whenever I want to. So pregnancy is used as a pawn. And the other thing is that when it comes to um, abortions, the reason why people aren't just for abortions should just be legal all around is because there are some women who use abortions, some men also, that use abortions as a form of birth control. They will go raw every time and they they will use uh, abortion as a way to hey well I don't want to be pregnant but I like the feeling of when you know when I go raw so I don't want to sacrifice the feeling I don't want to sacrifice that so I'm going I'm going to keep going raw but I'm going to use abortion I'm gonna have, I'm just having you know if she get pregnant I just take it to the clinic you know what I mean baby boy right why do you think the whole abortion scene was in Baby Boy. Why do you think that is? Because he was perfectly fine with her going through the trauma of of uh, having an abortion. And that was at the beginning of it. He was perfectly fine with her going through the notion of uh, of having an abortion. But he wasn't willing to, to alter his, uh, his actions in order to prevent that from happening. That's the reason why it was part of the movie. You know what I mean? It's part of being a man, going from being a boy to being a man and being responsible for your own stuff. Like I said in the in the book, um, one of the first things that I learned when I was trying to find out what being a man is about, the one of the first things that I learned, the first lesson that I learned is that a man has to be responsible for his own ish. You got to own your own ish. You got to own it. If you say something wrong, do something wrong, own it. If you hurt somebody, disrespect somebody, own it. Don't try and find a way that it's somebody else's fault or find a way to blame somebody else for it. Own it. You did that. You did that, so own it. If you, if the easiest way to bring heel into a situation where you and somebody else may have had a disagreement or you might have hurt somebody is to own the fact that you did it. Own the fact that you hurt them. Own the fact that you... You uh, uh, did whatever it is you needed. You you thought you needed to do at the time. You were with one girl and you were kind of tired of being with her, but you didn't want to hear. You didn't want to see the tears. You didn't want to hear her uh, tell you why you was wrong and this, that, and the other. So you just picked up with another chick and you you bounced out and and never to speak to her again and left her uh, crying and and weeping and having to get over you because you didn't. You weren't man enough to have the conversation, right? Um, own it. Own it. There's a lot of women right now, and a lot of men, but we talk. I'm talking about men right now. There's a lot of women that are walking around with a lot of hurt that could easily be healed, fixed with uh, a dude apologizing, a dude saying, "I'm sorry, I was wrong." Especially because when we're wrong, we know we're wrong for the most part. It's not a mystery. We we know that we're wrong. It's just not a whole bunch of guys who are willing to admit that we're wrong. Because we feel like admitting that we're wrong is somehow giving over our power. And we don't realize that um, that true power comes from your ability to be comfortable enough with yourself to acknowledge your own shortcomings. That's word to the wise, right? We got to be willing to own it. And in, in situations, in this situation, we're talking about, um, when we talk about uh, uh, abortion rights, women have to be willing to own the fact that every woman who's getting an abortion isn't getting an abortion because they're, because uh, if they carry the child to term, then they'll die. Every woman's not getting an abortion because they were raped. Every woman is not carrying the, the product of molestation. It's just not true. You know, if you keep it a buck, there's some women who are uh, who are carrying uh, a child uh, who are who get pregnant because they get more money on food stamps. If they do, there's some women who will who want an abortion because um, they don't they like the feeling of of raw penis and they don't want to uh, give that up just to, to not have a kid no more. They, they, are, they don't want to give that up, so they rather terminate the pregnancy than have the child. 
There's some women like that. If you're keeping it 100, that's God's honest truth. There's some women out there who are having abortions because they um, prefer having an abortion over um, wearing or getting a shot or wearing contraception. And that's who laws are made for. The laws aren't made for women who are men who have a conscience and do the right thing because their conscience makes them do the right thing. Laws are written for people who act mm -hmm. without conscience. So we have to um, we have to make sure that when we are um, when we are thinking about these laws that we're that we're making, thinking about these laws that we're creating, when we're thinking about these um, the right thing to do, wrong thing to do, we got to keep in mind that when we're making these uh, thoughts up and when we're when we're um, trying to shut this computer down, when we're uh, when we're thinking about right and wrong and, and blanket rules and stuff like that, we got to think about the people who who don't act right, who don't do right, who don't have conscience, who don't do, who won't do anything that they're supposed to do um, because they're supposed to do it. They have to be made to do it. We have that's who laws are made for. So if we say that abortions are 100 percent legal. All across the board, no regulation whatsoever. Whatsoever, mm -hmm. then you can't complain about the the woman who who says, "Hey, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's 20, 2019, 2020, I don't want to be pregnant. Uh, I'm gonna be going raw all year long. Um, I got good insurance, so you know, f it. If I get pregnant, I just kill kids." You can't be mad when they start having commercials. Uh, kill a kid, uh, kill a kid Saturdays at your local abortion clinic. Um, we'll we'll suck that thing up out you and have you go on about your day. You can't be mad at stuff like that. You can't then look back and be like, oh well, that's too far. No, because you're saying you don't want any regulation whatsoever, or you're saying that only women can regulate abortion rights, right? There shouldn't be any any laws that are created that only one gender is able to speak to. There should never be that. I don't care what what the law is. There should always be that counter view, that counter argument in there in order to make it a more well-rounded uh, law. There's always got to be that. You know what I'm saying? Any kind of work environment, this is just general, any kind of work environment that has too much of one gender this is going to come with its own problems. If you have an office where there's too many women, you don't get a lot of cattiness, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of envy and backbiting and this, that, and the other. If it's an office that has too many men, you're going to get a lot of uh, sexual innuendo and and locker room talk, and it's not going to be a it's going to be a hostile environment for a lot of women. They're going to feel uh, sexually not safe and stuff like. You're going to get that because you. Because you have too much of one in a, in a work environment. So when you're creating laws, when you're writing laws, you shouldn't have too much, too many of one gender being the only, you shouldn't have it to where one gender is the only one that's able to speak on any kind of subject, especially when you're talking about law. Because while I may not have an abortion or have a female reproductive um, uh, uh, facilities in my body, my daughter does. My mom does. My aunts do. My cousins do. You know, I can speak to what they've told me. I can speak to um, what what I'm concerned with concerning them. It should it be limited? Should should a man ever be able to force a woman to to keep something in her body? No, nah, that should never happen. Should a woman ever force a man to um, to be should a woman force a man to be responsible for, for, uh, for something that he never agreed to, or to something that he, um, that he made plain that he didn't want to have? No, this. I mean, if she buys a car, should he have to make the payments? Even though, if both of them go to the car dealership and she says, "I want this car," and and he's like, "Well, I don't want no car." And she gets the car anyway. Should he have to pay, uh, make payments on it? No, 
If you are in a situation where you're with a, per a dude who doesn't want a child and you want a child and you do things in order to have a child like stick a pen in the condom wrapper or um, or go and get the turkey baster and, and suck the, the sperm out of the condom and insert it into yourself, which all these things happen. Should the guy be responsible for the child afterwards? Should he have to pay child support? Should he be responsible monetarily or physically? No. But we got to have these conversations. We got to have worst case scenario conversations so we can know exactly how we're going to deal with them so that the law can be exactly what it needs to be. So I'm going to have this comprehensive conversation. That's my feelings on it. I'm going to have this comprehensive conversation. I'm going to invite some folks. Um, I'm going to see where I'm going to have it. Stay tuned because I'm going to have that conversation. It's going to be... I'm going to need more than an hour, but I think it's going to be um, well-deserved. I think that it's something to, to, it's something we need to talk about, especially since right now they are actually fighting. I don't know if it's a distraction tactic. Uh, I don't know, but they're fighting for the right to tell women what to do with their bodies and women. Y'all going to need some male allies uh, to go against this patriarchal um, law uh, that they're trying to force down y'all's throats, right? So stay away from the thought process that we don't need men talking about this, that, and the other. You don't need all men talking about it. You definitely need some men. You got to have some, you got to have some backup. And it's our responsibility to protect y'all. That's what we were here for. You know what I mean? So let us help. Peace and hair grease. I'm out of here. Appreciate y'all for rocking with me. Share this video. If you have any questions, any statements, you can comment underneath the video. I'll get back to it later on. Appreciate y'all, all right? Jeanette, appreciate you. Um, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's chop it up, all right?